Peter, grab the locks from the garage. And hurry, we only have two hours left. I came back to Earth rather quickly and hustled towards the garage. That's when I heard a loud gunshot a few blocks away. I walked down the steps and flipped the light switch on in the garage. While I reached out for the locks, that's when it hit me. Tonight was Hallow's Eve. You see, our town every year has a tradition. I would call it more of a curse, but that's beside the point. Every single year on Halloween, something enters our town and takes six children for every six blocks. Three boys and three girls. There's no way to stop the curse except avoid it at all costs. Lock your doors and board up your windows because this thing isn't human. That's all we know, simply because we've never had anyone who lives to tell us the tale of what truly is out there. I noticed these strange things happening around Halloween when I was 12 years young. I was laying down, trying to fall asleep. It couldn't have been more than an hour until I heard the yelling coming from my parents. While I was sitting in my bed, trying to make out what they were arguing about, my dog creaked open the door. I saw my dog walk down the steps and suddenly, their voices became clear. I heard my mother say, Michael, we can't be here tomorrow. It's happening, don't you remember? My dad retorted, Of course I do, Linda. You don't think that I would send him to gyms. Obviously I would, but no. Someone had to book a last minute vacation and never thought to tell the dang soul. Not even their god dang brother. Jim. Uncle Jim. He was talking about how every year I go to my cousin's for Halloween. My mother responded calmly. It's going to be okay, Michael. There's always a solution. Peter and I will go down to the storm shelter tomorrow night. You'll stay up here and watch over the house. He'll be inside. There's no need to worry. I started to slowly inch my way towards these stairs when I heard a knock on the door. Father spoke loudly. Who is it? He started to walk towards the door when another three knocks banged loudly against my door. I heard a man speak from behind the front door. Deputy Sheriff's Department, anyone home? As I glanced around the wall, I saw a tall man with a shiny badge standing at the front door. He spoke. How's it going tonight? I'm just stopping by to make sure that y'all stay inside tomorrow night because you know how things go around here. We don't want you going anywhere so feel free to call the station if you have any questions or require any assistance tomorrow night. Anywho, have a good night now. He shot a look over towards me before stepping off our front porch which didn't help much, considering my nerves and anxiety were going through the roof currently. Dad closed the front door after wishing the officer a safe night. Tomorrow would be my very first Halloween in this little town, since Kyle and Garrett are in the Bahamas. Like I had mentioned earlier, I spend Halloween with my cousins every year, who only live a few hours south from here. I loved when I go there because they lived in a faux candy bar type of neighborhood. You know the type. Rich yuppies every so often, mini mansions and sports cars around every turn. Also, my cousins are more akin to siblings to me since I'm an only child. I would rather go over there any time of the day than sit five more minutes in this creepy old town. The reason that I am documenting my experience here is for no other purpose than a warning. Don't try to search for this wicked town. Your intentions may be good, but all you'll walk out of this place with is more suffering than you thought was human. And I mean it too. You'll feel it as soon as you pass by that dang welcome sign. It sneaks up on you like a cobra in the forest. You feel it crawl up on your body and sink into your chest. The best way I can describe it is, you've been running down a dark tunnel for miles but you haven't moved an inch. Mark my words when I tell you this. For anyone out there that wants to visit this wicked town, don't. That very night, my dad took his keys off the kitchen counter and hurried out the front door to go somewhere urgently. I woke up to a bunch of commotion downstairs. It sounded like a hammer banging up against a wall. 
Yawning, I rubbed my eyes and I stretched my arms out. I got up and went over to my parents' room to see my mother getting ready for the day. I looked at her and asked, What's the dad doing downstairs? She replied with, Oh honey, he's just doing some work in the house for tonight, that's all. She patted my shoulder reassuring me. Halloween is tonight. What work needs to be completed for Halloween? Decorating? I walked downstairs to look beyond the wall and saw my dad boarding up the front door. I was certainly confused on what he was doing, because what type of work for Halloween requires boards of wood shutting the front door off from the outside? I quickly acknowledged this and yelled over the banging. Hey dad, why are you locking us out? Thinking to myself, I was confused. How would I be able to leave tonight to go trick-or-treating? After a moment, he replied with, Not out. In. I'm sure your little mind is very confused because your mother and I haven't explained what's wrong with this town to you yet. I didn't even know what all of this meant, only being 12. I just wanted to go out and trick-or-treat. Last year was so fun and now my parents are taking it away from me. All I want is some candy. And for some strange reason, my dad is boarding up our house. I asked, What do you mean wrong? What's wrong with, with this town? My father must have smelled the concern dripping off of me, like a tile after being submerged in water. What was he locking us in from? He paused for a moment. Let me explain. Every Halloween, something evil comes out of this town. It hides in the shadows within the streets and will wait to prey on six children for every six blocks until it reaches the end of our town. Last year, they counted 18 missing. Nobody knew what was taking the children because no one had ever set eyes on it and lived on till the next morning to inform us. As the sunlight turns pale on All Hallows' Eve, remember this, you are never alone. My 12-year-old brain could only compensate for so much. One thing stood out to me. There were only three hours until sunset. I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that my father was locking us inside with plywood boards all over our windows and doors now. What is it with this strange town? I've never really believed in monsters growing up, but now my parents believe something quite equal to that is out there. There's no way to get around this curse our town has. It's possessed with something that is far from human. I wanted to see what everyone was so scared of. I wanted to see this monster. It was almost 4 o'clock at this point and my mother made father and I our favorite meal. A pastrami sandwich. I was parched after devouring my lunch and my mother's famous iced tea suited the purpose. I was merely two sips away from finishing my drink when my father yelled from the other room. Peter, grab the locks from the garage. And hurry, we only have two hours left. As the sun drifted away into darkness, the night crept upon the horizon, welcoming the evil in. My dad locked up the garage door and bolted six plywood boards upon the door into the house from the garage. He went to talk to my mother about something that I'm not quite sure of. I then heard my mother say, Peter, honey, let's go downstairs now. Your father is going to stay up here for the night to make sure nothing happens to us. I'll cook us a meal for later while you get your things ready for the night. I walked up the stairs to see my dog laying at the top. I told him to come into my room and I closed my door. Looking out the window, I saw the sun setting. There was a purple blue sky just over the sun's blissful orange corona. I stood there with my dog looking up at me for a few minutes just admiring the sunset. I wasn't worried about tonight, nor frightful. No, quite the opposite. I felt this overwhelming sense of curiosity of what was upon that horizon. It almost felt as if something was pulling me towards whatever it was. It started happening just moments after I saw that green burst of light you see after the sunset. This feeling inside of me gifted with courageous amounts of inquisitiveness. Something was boiling up in my head to go outside and I just had to. Something sparked in my head. 
the key. I knew where the spare key was for the side door. If I could get that, I would be able to leave the house. The only problem is, my father will notice if I leave. I grabbed a sleeping bag and a few pillows downstairs. I dragged the sleeping bag all the way down to the basement while fighting with my dog Max since he keeps biting the back of my sleeping bag. I walked past the kitchen, getting a whiff of the amazing chicken pot pie that my mother just cooked. I haven't had much of a thought on how I would get out tonight, but I didn't know how to get that key. It was on top of the refrigerator so I climbed on top of the countertop next to the fridge. Feeling around the top of the refrigerator, I grabbed a few dust bunnies and the key. It was now dark out and I heard my mother calling me. Peter, it's time. I have your meal down here we need to shelter in place. I heard my father walking down the stairs and I shoved the key in my pocket. I was always a pretty good liar so when he abruptly asked what I was doing I said, just getting some water for us. I reached out towards the kitchen sink to turn it on. He replied with, All right now, after that, get on down there with your mother. I smiled and took two glasses of water down to the basement, where I was met with my dog Max and my mother. I handed her a glass of water and said, I'm pretty hungry after smelling those remnants in the kitchen that you left. She laughed and said, I set up a table for us over there. She pointed towards the other side of the basement. I saw a candle with a dimly lit flame on top of an old wooden table. It was passed on by my great-grandmother. The table was an antique. I always remembered my mother saying not to touch it because I would get my fingerprints on it. I was shocked that she was letting me eat dinner on it. I gave her a hug and I sat down. Over this meal, I ever so slightly kept feeling that urge in the back of my mind. I kept envisioning what was outside on this cold night. I finished up my meal by dropping some leftovers to Max. It was probably a few hours into the night at this point, and now that inquisitiveness I felt earlier was dwelling inside of me. It was like the anticipation a child had to wake their parents up on Christmas morning. I told myself that this feeling must be acted on. I wanted to be rebellious and be the first to figure out what this creature was. I developed a plan in my head. I asked my mother, Hey mom, I need to go to the bathroom. Can I go upstairs? She glanced over towards me and debated for a minute. Yes, please hurry though. Gestured for me to go. I got up from my seat and walked up the creaky stairs. I unlocked the basement door to the main floor. My dad was sitting over near the front door overlooking the front yard. He was peeking out the blinds when he noticed me. Boy, what are you doing up here? He yelled. I, I needed to go to the bathroom. Mom tells me that she needs to use the phone. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll be right back. He got up from his seat and walked towards the basement door. This was my one shot to get out. I ran towards the side door of the house and unbolted the six door locks and took the key from my pocket and inserted it into the keyhole. I turned it and a stimulating sense of adrenaline shot through my veins as I stepped foot outside into the night. I was running down the street, rotating my head to see both sides of the road, with houses boarded up like some ghost town. And that's when I heard it for the first time. It was this piercing tone that pulsates its way through your body. I felt the hairs on my body rise as I keened on where the sound was coming from. It was in the direction of my school. I wanted to stay hidden so I took a longer way which took me on the park path. It would take 15 minutes to walk to the school from the way that I was taking, and I was 5 minutes away when I had my first encounter with that thing. I heard it snickering, sending a sudden jolt of terror induced goosebumps. I got low to the ground. I heard it a few hundred yards to the right of me. It was pitch black and you could only hear a few crickets here and there. As soon as that thing emitted a noise, every other creature in the vicinity of it went quiet. It played that high-pitched snicker multiple times until it just stopped abruptly. I looked up to see if I could make anything out when I heard something else that caught my attention. 
I heard someone yelling at a distance. This creature must have heard it before I did because it went quiet. It took me a few tries to get exactly what the person was saying. It was definitely a male repeating something over and over again. Oh no, it was my father. My father called out to me. Peter, come home! Peter, come out! He was on the opposite path to the school, which was on the main road, a few blocks from my house. There is a little forest in between us currently, but if I get to the school, that wraps around. I also knew that if I yelled out, this thing would find me. I got up and I started to run. It was only five minutes away, and if I ran, I could make it in three. My plan was to get inside the school, take a shortcut, exit the school, and reconnect with my dad. As the wind rushed past my face while I ran, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It was in the field to the right of me, not even 15 feet away. I saw this thing hunched over just peeking its muscular neck out for me to see its black eyes glisten in the moonlight. That's all that I needed to see for my legs to move just a little faster. I could see the school in my view at this point, so I turned back to see if I was being chased. Nothing but the blank pit of darkness which consumed the night. The door was locked from the inside, and I needed a plan B. I looked around, but my hearing is what helped me that night. I heard my dad yell to the right of the building, so I headed that way. Right before I turned the corner to meet my dad, I heard that high-pitched tone that chilled you down to the bone. I felt some evil upon us, and I turned the corner to see my dad staring behind me. I looked at him with confusion, and that's when I sensed something behind me. We all were in the middle of the courtyard, and I asked, Dad, I'm scared. What should I do? He put his arm out and gestured a down motion for me to get to the ground. I understood this immediately, and did what I was told. I got down on all fours, and I laid on the ground. And that's when I heard it. This boy is righteously mine. I shall take him back to my home. Its tongue slithered in a way that it said its words. It almost sounded like a snake, but humanoid. I was still turned away facing my dad when I saw him reach into his back with both hands. I heard something click when he began to speak. You won't take my son, you monster. Go back to hell. My dad then pulled a pistol out from his back and aimed it at the creature. He didn't think twice about pulling the trigger. All I remember next was hearing that awful screech again, then hearing my dad in agony. He started screaming and I smelled a burnt flash. I saw this thing attaching itself, burning my father's skin off of his head right in front of me. He looked at me and said uh, one last thing. I forgive you. This monster was morphing into my father, shifting and contorting his muscles, seizing his brain, and burning his flesh off all the while it said, in that alienatic, emotionless voice, Peter's next. Peter's next. Peter's next. My dad, with what little control left of his body, took the pistol and raised it to his mouth, shoved it down his throat, and he did it. With all of this commotion, the courtyard's lights flickered on and this creature began to flare up into a flame as the light shined down on it. I saw its veins spurt black liquid out as it died in agony. Its mouth was the last thing to ever move on it, and this sick demon said, See you next Halloween, Peter. This all left me utterly speechless as it would anyone. I sat there for hours until the police found me in my catatonic state. The reports show that they found me up against a wall that had black liquid smeared all over the walls that read, Free me. I don't remember much of what happened after this, but my mother called the police after neither my father nor I showed up. Nobody believes me when it comes to that night. They locked me up at our local psychological rehabilitation center. They called me a sicko. Trust me, I wouldn't make this stuff up. The courts didn't believe me when I told them about that monster that had killed my father. I was determined to clinically insane with a year of inpatient rehab. Apparently, the police said that they never found my dad's body. All that was found at the crime scene was a black sludge and a boy in shock from just witnessing his father's death. 
I've made myself pretty comfortable here at the hospital. After the first couple of weeks of hearing the often screams coming from the loonies in the hall, you get used to it. I've actually made some friends while here. The only thing that makes me want to tear down that door is hearing that sick demon whispering down the hall at night. It only happens every so often, but when it does, I cover my ears with my pillow and hope that it's not really there. Sometimes I'll be sitting eating that disgusting lunch they give us, and upon all the chattering, I hear it. It comes from the vents sometimes, or just outside the window where you can't see. Sometimes I even think I see him when I'm really tired and drowsy after all the meds that they give us here. He just sits at the end of my hall, waving at me, waiting. I was sentenced to a full year the day after Halloween. Today marks the beginning of Halloween, which means that he'll be back. I have to get out of here, or I'll end up just like my father. Maybe I should have just remained hidden, 